G'day guys, Brian the Worm Man Donaldson here, just talking to you today about how to start a continuous flow through worm farm. Uh, another name for continuous flow through is, or we abbreviate it to CFT, is a flow through reactor. Um, but mostly people call them a flow through or continuous flow through, or CFT for short. Um, the deal with the CFT is it's basically a worm farm with a bedding depth of a minimum of 20 inches and usually about 24 inches where the vermicompost sits on the bars. Now this, the, the VC can be harvested by scraping through the bars with, for example, a little garden fork. Sometimes if you get the bars just about the right uh, distance apart and you maintain the moisture content in the right way, the uh, vermicompost can sometimes uh, slowly self-harvest itself over time. So you'll go back every week, say, and, and there'll be another, another gallon or so sitting in there just waiting to go. Now this distance of 20 to 24 inches means that the vermicompost will be cured, have little to no worms in it, and the cocoons will have hatched out. This is an important benefit in a CFT because you don't have to separate the worms out to harvest the, the, the vermicompost. The worms remain undisturbed the whole time and uh, you get extra air into the bedding from the uh, bars below. And the biggest, uh, in my mind, benefit to uh, a CFT comes in with the uh, benefits above that the CFT can hold actually two times the population of worms of any other system up to a, a capacity of about four pounds per square foot. So now we see some examples of um, CFTs that I've made myself. I've got two of the uh, units that I call the Beast. Uh, they're 10 square foot of bedding each. Um, and then I've got the Beast 1.5 as I've named it because it's uh, half again bigger than the other two. It's 15 square feet of bedding. And then you've got the wheelie bin flow through. Uh, interestingly, the wheelie bin flow through, there's complete uh, plans and instructions type of thing on the YouTube videos that you guys can access at no extra charge. One thing to note, I don't believe the little um, plastic totes, plastic boxes with a hole cut out in the bottom and a, and a bit of whippersnipper string put across them should actually be called a CFT. They're too shallow, they self-harvest, the cocoons and worms end up in the harvest all the time and the material ends up too dry. They're just not deep enough to actually be considered a CFT. Okay, so now we get to the meat of the discussion, how to actually start off bedding in a CFT. Uh, basically before you start you need to moisten a whole heap of bedding. Um, you can soak it or, or moisten it as you go in a bucket with some water but I wouldn't uh, recommend putting the material into the CFT dry and then trying to spray water through it. You won't get the penetration into the material and you'll end up getting a lot of water leaching down and ruining the cardboard before you even start. So basically with your bedding you can use products such as newspaper, cardboard, aged grass, aged leaves, uh, manure if you have to, but be cautious of um, deworming medication in it. Um, if you have to and you can't get hold of much other stuff, you probably know I don't really like the stuff because it's uh, you have to buy it and I, th I think you can get much better stuff for the worms cheap, uh, sorry free, uh, the uh, cocoa fibre or the peat can be used as well. Basically we have to use some sort of microbial material if you're not using um, aged grass or aged leaves. You could use things such as old worm castings, rich garden soil, or if you've got um, compost or semi-finished compost, you can use that. But be careful if it's not finished that you're not using so much that you'll radically heat up the bedding. Now we also have to add pH buffers into the worm farm, which is a fancy way of saying something that controls the acidity or regulates the acidity in a worm farm. That can be such things as dolomitic lime, lime, rock dust such as zeolite or azomite, ground up egg shells that are very ground up very fine um, or a product called oyster shell flour which is again just oyster shells ground up very fine. Rightio, so this is where we start actually talking about layering up the material in the in the worm farm. Um, we start out covering the bars, uh, the, the harvest bars 
with um, cardboard. I always recommend cardboard instead of newspaper. My belief is a lot of people, uh, and my personal experience, a lot of people uh, put too little material on the bars, and before the thing is full, which can take up to about a year, the uh, material breaks through over the bars, and you get early self-harvesting, or you get the worms being able to access the harvest area underneath and dropping through. I've had a little bit of that happen to me, and you can see that in the videos that I've uh, saved onto YouTube there for you. And so this layer of cardboard that I put over the bars, I'd recommend a minimum of an inch thick of cardboard. Uh, on my latest unit, um, I used about two inches thick of cardboard, and I think that's probably um, more about what you want to be using, because the worms will eat it from above, and the water that leaches down through the farm will start to destroy the cardboard. I'd prefer to like have a little bit of trouble later getting the cardboard out than having it break through too early. And basically you build that cardboard across the worm farm and then up the wall each time. So you're lining, start around the edges and line the wall down to the floor with a, with a box that's been broken open. And then after you've gone all the way around, then fill in the rest of the floor if the flaps aren't touching and overlapping across the floor. Put some boxes across the the flaps that come down from the wall and across the floor. So then after you've put the cardboard layers across the floor and built them up to the suitable level, we start layering up the bedding. Basically we're doing it in say about inch thick layers. So I start out mine with aged grass. Um, they love the aged grass material um, and, and it's got a very good microbial um, content to it. So, uh, in my mind, it's a very good product to use. Then on the next layer, I've used shredded newspaper. You don't need a shredder. There's a shredder intervention I'm going to be recording soon. There seems to be a lot of people think they need a shredder to do home worm farming. It's just not necessary. You can hand tear a newspaper into inch wide strips very quickly and easily at home. And that's what I would be recommending for you guys. So we do we do a layer of newspaper across. The, the good thing about newspaper is it breaks down quickly and provides um, a quicker food for the worms straight away. Um, but the problem with it is that it has um, little air um, amongst it as a layer. Um, and that's why we need to layer things so we get more air through rather than just having a huge block of something that air can't penetrate. So in the next layer is one of my favourite materials for worm bedding is, is cardboard. Uh, again, I've got a huge shredder because I, I use six or ten bags of this stuff a weekend. Um, you guys don't need that. You just need to basically hand tear it into four to six inch squares. You should be able to make up enough in an hour of um, tearing to, to do the whole job. Um, basically, the um, uh, benefit of cardboard is that um, it really adds a lot of aeration, both in the, if you use the fluted stuff, both in the air that's in the flutings, but also it tends to not mat down like newspaper will and, and provides a, an aeration layer into the bedding. Uh, if you don't want to use the um, uh, the, the fluted cardboard, you could use uh, torn up egg cartons, toilet paper rolls, anything like that, just, just not a glossy cardboard, and I wouldn't use anything that uh, smells um, of perfume either, like if you've gotten some uh, material from a shopping centre or something, and you've got ones that um, have uh, soap or something in them that's, that's very strong, I wouldn't use something like that. So we use a, a layer of cardboard. And then this is where I usually add the all-important buffers slash grit. Um, so as I said before, that's things like lime, dolomite, rock dust. Uh, if you really don't want to use it and you still want to put something in there to provide grit, um, you can use like a fine beach sand type of thing or just gritty soil from the garden. But I'd really, really advise you to use buffers, guys. And then basically after that, we keep repeating the layers um, just go back to the start, keep repeating the layers, remembering to put the buffer in every third or fourth layer. And then we repeat that until the bedding is at least 16 to 20 inches deep. Personally, I only used 12 inches the last time I did one, and in my opinion, that was just too shallow. These units take at least um, a year to fill up, and if we want to um, get them away from the harvest area quickly, we're going to have to be building up the layers on top quite um, uh, 
quite quickly and we, we want to provide this um, area below where it's a safe area for them to get away from any heat above from deep bedding or deep food above. So we want them out of that area as quick as possible. The material will compact down over a couple of weeks. You'll see it drop down by probably even up to 50% depending on what you've used in, in, your, in your layers. Um, so you, you want at least a 12 inch depth of bedding after all the settling and the initial eating has been done and preferably more. So that provides a safe zone for them to get away to. Now what we want to do then is we leave the bedding in the farm for a week to develop microbial growth and then we add a small feeding in. We can add the small feeding in straight away before the week or sometime during the week just so that there's food in there decomposing and you can watch my um, videos on YouTube on the correct feeding method for a CFT. Um, and then after that week's delay then we can introduce the worms. So I'll probably make some more videos uh, later on on how to um, build up the layers in a worm farm quickly and we can go from there. Thanks very much for watching my video guys. If you've got any questions just post them up either on YouTube or through the Facebook groups. Thanks very much.